One of the great things about the military, particularly if you're going to be in the infantry, army, or Marine Corps, right away you get a platoon. You learn fast or you fail. When I look at Tom Davin, it's just one of those guys, he can't not succeed in everything that he's done. He has seen the evolution of companies from small to much larger and been able to facilitate the growth of the company, maintain company culture. All right, let's see if I can hit the target. <laughs> you go. You got some. An interesting part of my childhood is my mother and father were both in the Navy. My mom was, she was a ball buster. Everybody feared Ruth Davin. And so they were delighted when in high school I got accepted to Duke University as part of the Naval ROTC program. And they thought, fantastic, he is going to be in the Navy. And then after uh, earning that Naval RTC scholarship, I pretty quickly decided I did not want to be on a big gray target. So I decided to join the Marine Corps, where at least I knew I'd be in the woods somewhere and be physically fit with a bunch of really motivated people. At the end of my four years at Duke University, I was commissioned in May as a second lieutenant of Marines. As an infantry platoon commander, every day you stand in front of 30 to 40 Marines if you get in front of your team and say, gentlemen, here's what we're doing today, and we're gonna do it better than anybody's ever done it before. And as a Marine leader, infantry officer, you share all those hardships with your Marines. So it builds you as an individual and as a leader. When I got sent up to 1st Recon Battalion from 1-1, I went to work for a guy named Tom Guinea. Everything was done with Tom Guinea supervising the movement. And I thought, well, at some point, Major Guinea's going to move on. We've got to document all this. I took it upon myself to write standard operating procedures for almost any dangerous operation we could do at recon. As best I can tell, no one had done that yet in the Marine Corps. It was all kind of word of mouth. I was fortunate that at first recon, Major Guinea said, you know what, Davin, you need to go to Ranger School. And you can imagine being a Marine at an Army course with a bunch of tough Ranger instructors. I took a lot of abuse, but I was never going to quit. I made it through. I was the honor grad and won the Merrill's Marauder Award for Leadership. So pretty unusual for a Marine to get an award like that. It was a great six years, and it was time to move on, and I had absolutely no idea what I'd do. I tell people what I do in business is a function of what I learned in the military, not so much at Harvard. The military is the best leadership school there is. What one learns in the military fundamentally is to take a look at a problem, put an operations plan around the problem, brief your troops, and then go execute the plan. So taking the five paragraph order format that I learned in the Marine Corps and applying that to Harvard Business School problems set me up for success there. Tom Davin's accomplishments are humbling. The amount of experience that he has within our community and him applying that to Black Rifle Coffee. By Tom Davin coming on to the team, we're really leveling up the company. Well, I was first exposed to Black Rifle Coffee Company probably four years ago, checking out some social media, and I thought, these are people who understand their brand and their audience, and they're very pure about who they are. They are uncompromising in their approach to the brand. So I met Evan Hafer through a friend of ours, Kyle Lamb, a crazy former Green Beret Sergeant Major, and it was after a SHOT Show several years ago, and Kyle called me up and said, hey, Davin, you need to go meet this guy, Evan Hafer. He's out in Salt Lake running a coffee company. I think you guys would hit it off, and Evan's looking for some mentorship from somebody who's been around business. He's opened up several hundred stores. So when we're trying to focus on opening up stores, you really have to pull from people's experience you try to do that as a novice or a person that doesn't have the experience, you're doomed to set yourself up for failure through your own arrogance. Evan called me kind of in the latter half of 2018. He said, 
might want to get a little more of your time. Maybe you could think about doing more on the board. Maybe you could be chairman. Why don't we talk about it? And I said to Evan, I do not care about title. I just care about getting in, grabbing the ball, and making a difference. Evan's the CEO and founder. I'm the co-CEO. So my goal is to really make sure Evan can work on the things that he does uniquely well and not get distracted. Why is Black Rifle Coffee Company different? And what are the unique challenges? Well, first of all, it's run by military veterans who are really plotting a different course in the business world, building a direct consumer coffee subscription company that no one's ever created before. And most fast growing consumer brands are growing at 20 to 25% per year. Black Rifle Coffee grew 75% last year. My goal really is that I think we can get to our 10,000 veteran goal, but I think we can be about half and half. So we don't have to be so pedantic to say, you have to be a veteran to work here. No, you want to have to be around veterans, but you don't have to be a veteran yourself. It's important for the culture to enable people to grow and change over time. It really stems from Evan's commander's intent about the mission of the company, serving the community, building the best and most purposeful direct consumer coffee subscription company in the world. And every leader has to take it as their personal mission to help their people grow.